so you can knit the self-striping version. There is a like a little bug that's been flying around in here, driving me crazy. Get away. Hey everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 69 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, June 30th, 2020. It is the last day of June, which is crazy. So we're going into July tomorrow, July 1st. And that means I have one month left until work starts back. Ugh. Summer is officially halfway over for me, although I think the first day of summer was only a few days ago. Summer is something different here, <laughs> or when you're a school teacher, it's to me, summer is when school gets out and then uh, it's fall when school starts, even though it's like August 1st. Um, but anyway, I am super excited. I am recording in the afternoon and I feel like I'm almost back to like my normal time because I have been recording some in the morning over the summer and I feel like I'm like more ready <laughs> or maybe it's just the day today. Um, but I have plenty to show you. Oh, I should start by telling you what I am wearing. By the way, I feel like my background looks kind of funny. I don't know if it's because there's the shelves are so empty now, it's like too much white. I don't know if I should arrange them, maybe like move, switch these so that there's more emptiness. I really have no idea. I just remember watching it back last week and thinking, it looks so different. <laughs> it is different, but it also kind of just looks strange. So let me know what you think. Should I rearrange some stuff? Should I make it fuller? Like should I have move this yarn over maybe for behind me or not? I don't know. I do like having my... Um, my scale here because I actually use that a lot and having it on that top shelf is really convenient. Um, so I'll be walking you through everything on the shelves behind me when I do my yarn room tour, but that is not for a couple of weeks. Anyway, I am wearing, this is the Morning Mist by Annie Rowden. This is a pattern I made quite a few years ago. I don't know how many years ago, maybe five or so and I completely forgot to look up what yarn I used, but I will have my project page or at least my um, Ravelry projects linked down below. I've been trying to include specific project pages as well. Um, so look in the description box for that, um, but it's just a really cute little um, sleeveless top, but it, it kind of comes over so you get a little bit of sleeve here. And it's lace on the back, which is just so pretty. I remember it working up really, really fast. I made it on a trip. Um, I thought that I made another, I was wearing a purple tank top on Saturday that I thought I had made on this trip, but actually I think this is the project that I was working on. If you did, if you caught my live, you might know what I'm talking about. I talked about it really briefly, um, but I was working on this during a trip my family took to Washington DC. I distinctly remember sitting in the way back seat of my mom's van. There are four kids in my family, four adult children, and we took a road trip together. We weren't all, all like adults at that point, but I remember that distinctly. I love that knitting and crochet projects can have memories like that. But anyway, so that's what I am wearing. This is one of the tops that I chose to keep as part of Project 333, which is to choose 33 items to wear for three months. So this was one of the knitted items that I chose for summer. Okay, let's move into some finished objects. I do have something that's pretty much finished. I think I'm gonna take out the bind off and redo it, but this is something that I just completely made up. It's not really a design per se, but this is a placemat. Let me shake it out because it got all wrinkly. So this is, I know it's just a rectangle, honestly. It looks cuter when it's laid out and it doesn't get like misshapen, um, but this is just a really squishy garter stitch placemat. I am playing with the idea of making several of these to put on our dining room table, um, but this one is actually just gonna be for toaster. <laughs> I'm gonna put it under his food bowls. I haven't quite decided yet if I like, I just did a regular bind off and I feel like I wanna change it up a little bit, which is why I haven't cut it from its yarn yet. But I used sugar and cream 
in the colorway Ecru, the regular Ecru, not soft Ecru, the regular Ecru. Um, same as this bag. And yeah, I like it. So I was determined to finish that up because I'm like, I need to have something finished and not all these like whips going. So I finished this up the other day and now I just need to finish, finish it and weave in those ends. I'm not even gonna, well, I might block it because sometimes with, with cotton, you can see how it's like just getting stretched out just by picking it up like this. I did play with doing an I-cord edging on it, which would definitely help it hold its shape but I didn't like it. So I think when it's laying flat, maybe I will wash and dry it because it'll kind of shrink up. It will look a lot better, but I'm kind of going for that rusticy like farmhouse. I don't know. I don't know what style is, but that's kind of the fill I'm going for. So that is my finished object for the week. Now, I did work on Lilium. <laughs> <laughs> I worked on it just a little bit and I'm gonna work on it more tonight um, I have sort of like a standing knit night and I worked on it then last week and I'm gonna work on it again tonight so oh look at that did more than I thought so I did about an inch and a half or so um, so yeah I'm proud of myself <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty bad, isn't it? So I worked on Lilium a little bit. This is the, uh, this is Lily, Lilium, yes, Lilium, um, by Megan Nodecker. And I know you guys are like, come on, girl, just finish that up. <laughs> I really do need to. This coming weekend is 4th of July, and so I'm hoping to have some more time to just like hang out with family and work on this. So. Hopefully I can actually make that happen. But yes, Lilium, I am using, where's my yarn? I am using Gritty Knits Darlin Wool Cotton in the colorway Josephine. And I really love how it feels. So yes, I'm gonna work on it more tonight. I am, I am. I'm even gonna move this stitch marker. But I will say that I don't think anybody, I think one person messaged me on Instagram and asked me if I was working on Lilium like I asked. Because <laughs> I said last week, I'm like, I need some encouragement to work on this. Like, DM me and say, hey, are you working on that, Lilium? I need some encouragement. So thank you to that person <laughs> who reached out to me. But yes, I need to get back to work on that because um, I, love, I love wearing knitted tops, even in the summertime, because when you're indoors and there's air conditioning, you can pretty much wear whatever you want. And... I started a new project this week. I started a new pair of socks. So I think I did talk about the yarn here. Um, I don't know if it was last week, I can't remember. Um, but I have started, you can see I've got the cuff of a sock. I actually just finished the last row of the cuff. So I'm about to go on to um, the leg. But I am using two yarns left over from another project. And both of these yarns came from an advent calendar. So you can see they're not full skeins. They were full skeins, but I use them on another project. So I think that ooh, this one was from, so it's a Dragon Horde yarn and Yarn Cafe Creation advent calendar. I think this was from their second year, which uh, was 2018 and then this one was from this past year 2019 although I cannot be a hundred percent sure but basically they create a Harry Potter advent calendar I'm getting it again this year I'm super excited um, and the last day is a full skein and it is for your house so I'm a Hufflepuff so these are my Hufflepuff colors and I thought I'd really like to use them in another project like on their own but I don't really have enough of either one so I thought maybe I could blend them together using helical knitting. And so I am trying that for a pair of socks. And as you can see, it doesn't, I know it's hard to tell on the ribbing. I think we'll be able to see better in the stockinette, but it doesn't really look like two yarns. I think it's blending together pretty well. And again, I'm just doing helical knitting. Um, I will link my tutorial, um, but basically helical knitting is where you have two strands of yarn. You can do it with different colors or the same color. And instead of carrying them at the beginning of round, they kind of chase each other and you slip three stitches. It's really easy, but you just have to see it. Um, but yeah, it's working out really, really well. And I feel like I'm learning something new about helical knitting here. 
because I, I experimented with something. I'm trying to remember exactly what I did. I need to start a project page and write it down before I forget. But I cast on with one color, used the same color for the first row. I went all the way to the last three stitches. And then I think I, wait a second. Oh no, I already forgot what I did. I can't remember if I slipped to the last three or if I joined in the second color. I think I slipped them. So instead of doing like one whole round color one, joining color two on top of color one, I did one whole, almost a whole round in color one, slipped the last three stitches, and then started, huh. I don't know, it kind of made sense in my head, but now I think that I meant to do what I was saying first. I think what I meant to do was do um, cast on in what color one, knit almost a full round in color one to the last three stitches, and then join in my color two, and then I could start the slip thing after that. Maybe that's what I'll try on the next sock. I'll get back to you which works better. But either way, I don't think it's gonna make like a huge, huge difference on the sock. I did notice, like especially because I'm doing ribbing, knitting is in a spiral and when you're helical knitting, there's always like a little segment that's a row shorter. Or maybe there's not, maybe I made that mistake. You'll have to tell me if you know more. But I could definitely tell until I made it all the way with my slip stitches back around to the beginning. So anyway. That's really technical, but it was, it's was it been an interesting experiment, and I have been working on these socks in the mornings when I've been listening to um, the Harry Potter books for the Harry Potter Summer Read-Along, or Reading Challenge. Um, we are on book number five, if you are joining in with us. A lot of you are, I know, and a lot of you are knitting um, as a part of K Summer Sock Camp at the same time, which is really fun. So knitting, I'm knitting Harry Potter socks, I'm reading Harry Potter in the mornings before I get to doing like YouTube work and stuff. So that's been a lot of fun. Now I have no new questions this week in my um, Ravelry thread. So if you have any questions for me, definitely head over to the Ravelry group Love and Stitches and ask me questions there. So since I don't have any questions, I this is perfect timing because I had something else that I really wanted to share. And so I was like, oh, perfect. This will be the the best podcast to put it in so I have something for my question segment. Also a side note, um, I am going to be starting up collaborations again next week, so then you will get lots of more interesting questions. Um, for my collaborations, make sure you're following me on Instagram at Nitty Natty so that you can be one of the people to ask us questions. Um, anyway, so I am doing a crazy declutter of my house, including the yarn room. I know that I've mentioned that, but I am getting rid of some finished knitted items. And I know that for a lot of people that kind of like makes them feel a, some type of way. Um, because you guys know, you know how long it takes to make different things and just how hard it is to get rid of. So I used to feel like I could never get rid of anything that I had made ever. But when you've been knitting for you know, however many years, sometimes I think it starts to change where you're like, actually, I don't think I need to keep everything that I have made. So I am going to be getting rid of some things. And this week I was looking at blankets. So I've been keeping some blankets in an ottoman down here in my yarn room, and I never use them. I don't think I have used them one time since moving into this house and we have lived here for over a year and a half. So to me that really says, do I need these items? So I was pulling them out and I really don't think I'm ever going to use them, but it's still really hard to get rid of them because they are handmade and they carry a lot of memories. So I thought in order to honor them, I would share them here on the podcast so that I can tell you about them and have that memory, but then I can let the physical item go. So without further ado, let me introduce you to a few of the blankets that I have made from the past. All right, we are gonna start with the newest blanket, the most recent finish. And this is the Garter Squish by Stephen West. I did this out of scrappy yarn and I'm gonna to try to show it to you here, but I will probably do like a little pan over. It is a garter stitch blanket 
with an I-cord edging and I did mine scrappy. It is absolutely huge. You can see there's a pool in it <laughs> right here. So I used all kinds of scrap yarns, mostly acrylic. Um, they were all worsted weight that I had accumulated and I held them together, I think double, using a size 15 needle and I knit this blanket. And this blanket, it wasn't just like a scrappy project for whenever. I knit it while my husband and I were watching a particular show and I'm not gonna name it because we never actually finished the show. Um, so I haven't seen the end and I don't want it to chance any spoilers. But we were watching a specific show and it had many, many seasons, and I knit on this for, let me see, from August 2017 to February 27th of 2018. So how many months is that? Quite a few months. August, September, October, November, December, January, and February. So for seven months, I worked on this blanket nearly every night as we watched an episode of that show. So it is kind of hard to get rid of it because it has that memory, but at the same time, like feeling this blanket, I knit this up because I wanted to use um, scrappy yarns that I knew I wouldn't use in any other project because I don't love the way that this yarn, these yarns feel. So I don't think that I will really ever use this blanket, which is kind of sad. So I'm hoping that I can give it away and somebody will find some comfort in this blanket. It is is truly a crazy little thing, um, but it was still a lot of fun to make. I'm happy that I made it. I'm happy that I used up all of these yarns instead of just throwing them away, which is what I've been doing with a lot of yarn lately or giving it away. Um, so yeah, I can happily let this blanket go move on to someone somewhere else who is going to love it. Okay, we are gonna go back even further in time, this time to 2016. That's when I finished this blanket, but I actually started it in 2008, which is pretty insane. So this blanket is really, really cool. I'm definitely gonna have to get a, a pan of this one. I am not dead set on getting rid of this blanket because just because of how much work it was and how long that I worked on it. So this is a patchwork blanket. It is um, from the book 200 Knitted Blocks and I have, I'm going to try to show you as much as I can. So all of the blocks are different. They are all knitted and then the border is crocheted and then I even, I don't know if I paid, I must have paid somebody to do this. It is aligned with flannel on the back. So it's actually a really nice blanket. It's small, it's definitely like kid baby sized, um, but it's definitely like kid baby color. So the story of this blanket, the reason why it started in 2008, is we did a knit along at the shop where I was working um, Bliss Yarns in Nashville, Tennessee, or in Brentwood, Tennessee. and. I participated in the knit along. I think we did like two blocks per week or I can't remember, but it was over the course of a summer and it was so much fun because I got to learn so many different like crazy techniques. Like we did color work, we did textures, we did like joining, lace. I mean, it was just so much fun. So if you're ever looking for a good way to learn a bunch of different stitches, doing like a sample or afghan like this is a great way to do it. You can tell by my color choices that I was pretty young when I picked this and I just picked like primary rainbow colors. I probably would never pick these colors again, um, but it is, it's fun, it's primary. Um, but yeah, I've just never loved the color choices since when I picked them. Like I did for a few years, but it's been 12 years since I started that, so my tastes have definitely changed. Now I finished all of the blocks somewhere probably in 2008, but it took me many, many more years to actually put it together. I do take pretty diligent notes on Ravelry, so I can follow along here. And I said, let's see, that on February 19th of 2010, I said, I don't know why this is taking so long to finish. On June 13th of 2010, I sewed up all of the squares um, and then I, I guess I had another square that was really cool. So I decided I would make 
four more squares. So then on June 14th, wait, that cannot be right. I made four more squares in one day. My dates can't be right on here. Anyway, this is pretty funny. I guess I made some more squares, couldn't figure out an edging. Um, it took me six years. <laughs> I hope this is making some of you feel better for those projects that you've had around for a long time. Six years to decide on an edging and I decided I wrote on January 18, 2016. Today I decided this blanket just needs to be done. <laughs> and I crocheted an edging and then, oh, I took it to a tailor with some fabric and they backed it for me so that I did pay somebody to back it. So it took me eight years to finish this blanket. But you know what? Maybe it took me so long because I didn't really care for it that much. So I haven't fully decided on this one. I think I was saving it to like give to somebody special, but honestly, I might just give it away because at this point I am just, I just want things like out of the house that I am no longer using or don't see myself using. I don't think that this is something that I would want to keep like, I know that's what a lot of you are probably thinking, like what if you want it for your own kid one day? I don't think this is something that I would want. Again, I don't know, but I feel like by that point I may have forgotten <laughs> about this. So this one's this one I am debating, but it is it is pretty fun. So there you go, another blanket from the past, and I have two more that are even older than this. All right, this next blanket is the last one that I have on Ravelry. I think it's gonna take us back to somewhere in 2010, although I'm not 100% sure because I didn't put a date on it. So, anyway, <laughs> this blanket is made out of probably one of the yarns that I've fought with the most because I've made two blankets out of it and that is Lion Brand Homespun. The reason that I thought, oh, I hope that didn't mess up the mic, hold on. The reason that I thought with this yarn so much is because basically Homespun is like fluff on a coil, and as you knit with it, it can like slide down and bunch up, and then you have to cut it. Anyway, it's pretty not fun, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, but this blanket is really, really cool. I made this in high school, just before going off to college, and actually it's it's knit in strips so let me see if i can kind of show it to you it's absolutely massive it's knit in strips four different strips four different colors um, so i actually made this blanket with some friends so we each picked a color and we made strips in that color there was only three of us even though we did four strips i think we realized the blanket was going to be too narrow um, so i believe what color was mine i think i said on here um, we couldn't choose three colors. I said, I'm knitting cobalt. So I believe I made four strips or three strips just in this color. And then, you know, one was part of my blanket. One was part of like other friend, other friend. And then we all did the same thing. And it was a really cool project because my friends were learning to knit. Um, and so it kind of like we kind of learned, you know, or improved our knitting skills together and then we each put a little initial so we could tell them apart of course because they were all the same i don't know if we sew them together in the same order or not i cannot remember but I, somewhere on one of these corners i know i have like a little in that i like sewed into here here we go have like a little in on here for Natalie, which is pretty funny. Um, but I use this blanket quite a bit actually when I first made it. If you have any blankets made of homespun, here's a nice tip for you. When you dry them, put some extra dryer sheets in there. It makes it really, really soft instead of squeaky like it can be. Um, but I just don't use it anymore. It's not, these are like heavier than the kinds of blankets that I really like. And again, I'm just not using it. So I think it's finally time 10 years later for this blanket to go on to a new home. Um, but it was really good and obviously filled with tons and tons of memories um, from high school, like knitting it with my friends. So it was a really, really fun, really cool blanket, but I think it's time for it to go. All of these blankets have this like weird smell that it's that i can't quite place they've been sitting in this ottoman in a room like not trapped away like specifically anywhere they just have that like funny 
like storage unit smell. So I don't think anything has gotten to them, um, but because they've been just like open in this room, but still they, they smell musty. <laughs> um, this blanket is so old that I don't even have it on Ravelry. So I'm gonna guess that I made this blanket in probably somewhere between 2006 to like 2008. This is one of the first projects that I ever made. Actually, it's my earliest project that I still have. I think I have my first pair of socks. My very first project ever was with this yarn, but it was a scarf and I think my mom might still have that. If she didn't, I would not be upset. Um, but this is the other first project that I have. So this is really like my learn to knit project. And I'm sure some of you are like, how could you ever get rid of that? I'm gonna take a picture of it. <laughs> I don't need it anymore. I've probably, I've like never really used it. But basically, it is a bunch of different squares, blue and green. Look at this, y'all. Look at these tears and holes in this blanket that is maybe 14 years old. Um, so this blanket is pretty cool because it is one of my first projects. What I remember from this blanket, besides knitting hand spun, um, or hand, homespun, homespun. Was I saying hand spun? I meant homespun. Um, I remember that I did not know how to cast on, so I made up my own method. It was really like the backwards loop method, which is not great. I also did not know how to bind off, so I would take a needle and I would like weave it through all of the stitches with a strand of yarn. I don't know how this blanket is even holding up. That's probably why it's unraveling. unraveling. I obviously made different green and pink ones. I think I just did a, like a whip stitch to join them, which doesn't look too bad. And then I made some squares out of this crazy stuff, this like boucle yarn. I don't remember if I got this at a craft store or if I got it from potentially, no, I don't think I got this one from Target. Remember when Target was selling yarn for a little bit in the dollar section? It was like when the dollar section started. Um, but then I made these giant borders and I'm actually kind of impressed with like, I don't know, 14 year old me, however old I was, because I did some decreasing to make these like meet in the corner. As you can see, it's not quite right, <laughs> but I did make these, I like did these like knitted borders because I didn't know how to apply a border. I didn't know how to pick up stitches. So I literally knit these borders separate and then sewed them on and like did some kind of crazy decreasing and increasing to make these at the corners. So not too shabby, I feel like. I learned a lot from this blanket, um, but again, I'm not using it. I don't like the colors at all, and it's time for it to go. So I hope you enjoyed that little impromptu segment of blankets from the past. I know that I enjoyed it, and I'm going to like appreciate having those memories to look back on. I'm also gonna take some pictures of them and make sure they're saved in an album on Google Photos. So I do, I can at least reference back to like my first project and stuff. But as far as keeping the physical items, I really just don't need that. So they are going to get donated. I haven't decided if I'll take them to Goodwill or if I'll take them, because you know, some of these are pretty ratty. I might just take them to Toaster's Vet and let them use them, wash them, toss them, whatever they need to do. Um, I'm sure you guys have a lot of feelings about that. <laughs> Imagining if they were your projects, would you be able to get rid of them or not? You can let me know. Let me know your feelings. I, I am interested to hear them. Okay, let's talk about some news. So um, two new videos this week. I had a live video over the weekend on Saturday. That was a lot of fun. Thank you if you were able to come or if you watched it after the fact. I really appreciate it. Um, and then also the love letter to the Skinny Can Cozy, which I'm gonna talk all about here in just a second. But um, those are the two new videos this week. And then big news coming next week on Tuesday, mark your calendars, is the Sock Week 2020 intro video. In the intro video, I am gonna tell you who the sponsors are, when their uh, products are going live, when Sock Week is, all of the details for the knit along, you are not gonna wanna miss it. I will do it as a premiere, most likely at noon central time on Tuesday. So if you can join us live, 
come and join it live as it gets announced or you can watch it afterwards, no worries at all. I am gonna be filming that, I think, tomorrow. And I'm excited because I'm gonna get my like little Hawaiian shirt, or I don't know, no spoilers, I won't tell you. Um, but if you um, don't know what Sock Week is, it started last year and I will link 2019 Sock Week down below so you can get a little teaser before the this year's Sock Week video comes out. Um, so now let's talk about um, the design that's coming out today, if you're watching this on Thursday, um, but July 2nd, if you're watching it afterwards. So the Skinny Can Cozy is releasing on July 2nd. So this is a, a knitted can cozy for skinny cans. This is a 12 fluid ounce can, but I will have a note in there on how long to make it for 16 ounce cans. It's really a super simple adjustment. Um, they start at the bottom, they're knit in the round, and then this one has like the little sporty stripes on there. So if you wanna knit it in your team colors, you can do that. But it also has a self-striping version. So you can knit the self-striping version. There is a like a little bug that's been flying around in here, driving me crazy. Get away. Um, <laughs> it was here before the blankets. It was here yesterday. I. Don't know if it's the same one or not but anyway so there are my skinny can cozies um check out the hashtag skinny can cozy if you want to see like i have had so many testers on this pattern and they have been helping me make it amazing i'm really excited about that and i've also got um additional pdfs that are going to come out for the can cozy classic can cozy and classic bottle cozy with the self striping version so Hold on, why is my nose so itchy? So let me make sure I get all the facts that you need. One, watch the love letter video. That will give you all the details on that pattern. Um, two, get the coupon code from the love letter video. It's 30% off, just the skinny can cozy. Um, and it is good, that code is good for eight days. <laughs> it's so distracting. Um, normally I do the uh, coupon code for two weeks, but I just noticed that um, people weren't really using it after that first week, so that's why I shortened it to one uh, one week. Um, what else do we need to know? Uh, if you already own any of those patterns, the classic can, classic bottle, or you don't own Skinny Can Cozy yet because it hasn't come out yet, but if you own those two patterns, you will get an update inc to include the self-striping version of the pattern. And then also just the, the regular version is gonna get an update too because I need to add in some links to new tutorials that I've had since then and some clarity. I've gotten a lot of good notes from my testers on the Skinny Can Cozy and so we're gonna improve those patterns as well. Um, if you're an Etsy user and you have bought any of those patterns, if you will just email me nittynatty at gmail.com and you can let me know that you have purchased that pattern in the past and that you want an update email to you. I'm happy, happy to do that. Um, there is no special coupon code for people who already have um, any of the can cozies, but the 30% off code is good for everybody. So definitely check that out. Actually, I lied. There is, a, there is a special coupon code that I'm going to send to you, but it, it's not a, a special discount. It's 30% off as well. So backtrack, Natalie. Um, what else? I, I, I'm looking up into the slide. It seems to have the answers. Um, what else, what else? Oh, there is a bundle. So if you don't have any of the cozy patterns and you like all three of them, um, the bundle is going to be available. So the classic can, classic bottle, classic, or skinny can cozy, all three of those patterns for $12. So that's $4 per pattern. So that's gonna be your absolute best deal. Now, if you um, were watching my stories on Instagram, I kinda hinted that you might wanna go ahead and grab the bundle early. So if you grab the bundle early, you got it for $9 because it just had the two patterns in it. And then when I add additional patterns, like the skinny can cozy, then this one comes to you for free. Same thing with the Fall Means Football Collection because that includes those cozies as well. But I explain all of that, um, I believe, in the Love Letter video as well. So is that everything for the, yes, the Skinny Can Cozy? Anyway, coming out today or July 2nd, whichever um, is a better reference for you, definitely get that coupon code. Ooh. 
And yeah, I think that's it for the Skinny Can Cozy. All right, let's talk about life. So I have been hiding my yarn room declutter on Instagram stories and stuff, trying not to show you guys anything because that video is gonna be coming out in just a couple weeks, but I had all these other videos that I needed to get out with information like the love letter and sock week, so that's why there is a delay on that. Plus, I'm not 100% done. I still have some other things to do. So if you have, I've had a couple people message me like, I wanna see your new desk and I wanna see what the yarn room looks like. It is coming, I'm hiding it like intentionally just so that video is a really fun surprise. Um, what else is going on? I've had several meetings, uh, summer meetings for school. If you don't know already, I am a teacher and we had a meeting on Friday and a meeting on Monday. And it's just interesting, you know, preparing for the next school year because we don't really know what it's going to look like. I know that our parents are gonna have a lot of say in what their own child does, whether they come to school in person or not, um, which is great. And also our district is really awesome because they are communicating so much with us as teachers. So I couldn't be happier with that, but at the same time, like no matter how great we are, or how well we are prepared, you know, we just can't prepare for the unknown. So I'm sure you're feeling the same way if you are a teacher, if you have kids, if you work in a school district in any capacity, if you work in any job in any capacity, basically everybody, <laughs> I'm sure you're feeling a good degree of apprehension about the upcoming month. So just know that I am right there with you and you and I'm using knitting as an outlet more than ever. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's what's going on in life right now. Not too much new, but also um, happy 4th of July if you're in America because this is coming out on, yeah, the second and we have a Saturday 4th of July, which is super cool, except that um, this is not the same kind of 4th of July as we normally have. We did have some plans, but they have since changed because just because of everything going on, which is unfortunate, but understandable. Um, okay, bringing me joy. So something that has been bringing me joy a lot this week, this is gonna be so mean, but my new desk that I haven't really shown you guys, I got a brand new desk, I sold my desk, I got a new desk, that is an L shape, and so I'm thinking it's gonna be really good to use um, even when I'm recording tutorials. I haven't done that yet, um, but I do have extra space. So now I have a side of my desk for my computer and a side where I can like, you know, store, you know, not store things, but like set down things, set my planner, uh, you know, set knitting projects when I need to, and that's been really, really nice. So I've, this is only my second day working down here with it but I appreciate it a lot because I was sitting at the kitchen island and my neck last week was hurting so bad, I think from like just sitting in such a weird way. So I super appreciate having that new desk now. All right, have I missed anything? I don't think so. Um, thank you for indulging me on the blankets. That was a lot of fun. Send me encouragement for Lilium. I clearly need it. And I am beyond excited to share with you guys all of the Sock Week stuff next week. You are not going to want to miss it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.